In this video, we consider GMM estimation and the properties of the GMM estimator. Recall that GMM estimation relies on assuming some moment conditions for the data. We write these moment conditions in terms of a function g of theta, where theta is the model parameters. Here, wt denotes the model variables, zt is a vector of instruments, theta contains the model parameters, which is a k-dimensional vector. Moreover, f is an r-dimensional function. In practice, we do not know the expectation, so we consider the sample moments instead and define the function gt. Recall that in the case where r is equal to k, meaning that we have just as many moments as model parameters, we should be able to solve the equation gt being equal to zero, find theta and the solution would be the method of moments estimator. However, we consider the situation where r is greater than k, meaning that we have more moments than model parameters to estimate. And we denote this case over identification. In this case, the equation gt being equal to zero has no solution in general. In this case, instead of setting gt equal to zero, we seek to minimize the distance between gt and zero. In order to measure the distance between gt, the sample moments, and zero, we consider the quadratic form. The quadratic form qt as a function of theta is given by gt prime wt times gt. Here wt is a positive definite matrix. The fact that wt is positive definite has three implications. First it ensures that qt is always non-negative, which is nice because we view qt as measuring a distance between gt and zero. And we know that a distance has to be non-negative. The second implication is that all moments have positive weight, meaning that we do not exclude any moments in order to obtain an estimate of theta. And lastly, by just ensuring that wt is positive dividend, we may allow some moments to be more important than others. So, Given the choice of WT, which would be a positive definite matrix, we define the GMM estimator of theta as the argument that minimizes the quadratic form, meaning the argument that minimizes the distance between the moments GT and zero. Note here that in practice, we may not be able to solve this analytically, but instead we use some numerical optimization. Lastly, we may observe that in general, the GMM estimator will depend on the choice of a weight matrix WT. Next, we turn to the properties of the GMM estimator. We start out by stating high level conditions that are sufficient to have that the GMM estimator is consistent. First, we assume that the true parameter vector theta zero is identified. This is formally stated as having that g should be equal to zero if and only if theta is equal to theta zero. Moreover, we assume that a law of large numbers applies to the data. We state this in terms of having that the sample average of the function f tends to the expectation of f as t tends to infinity. Note here that we will typically assume that the data are stationary and weakly dependent such that a law of large numbers applies. So given that we have identification and that a law of large numbers applies, it holds that for any choice of weight matrix WT, we have that the GMM estimator is consistent. Next we turn to the distribution of the GMM estimator and we state sufficient conditions for having that the GMM estimator is asymptotically normally distributed. We will here assume that the same conditions applies as for the consistency case, 
So we assume that we have identification and that a law of large numbers applies. In addition to this, we will assume that a central limit theorem applies to the data. Specifically, we assume that when we multiply the average of f with the square root of t, that this quantity has, a, has an asymptotic normal distribution. The matrix S is the asymptotic variance of f. Again, note here that the central limit theorem applies if the data is stationary and weakly dependent. So again, this is what we typically want to assume for the data. Under these conditions, we have that the GMM estimator is asymptotically normally distributed. Here, the asymptotic covariance matrix V has a certain structure that depends on the first der derivative of F, it depends on the asymptotic variance of F, and it depends on the weight matrix W. Here, D is the first derivative of the expectation of F, and W is a positive definite matrix that you may think of as the limit of the weight matrix WT. And we note here that the asymptotic covariance matrix of the GMM estimator relies on the choice of weight matrix. Thank you for watching.